Federico Fierli. I'm here in Umitsat, just in front of the Copernicus satellite control room that you can see here with all those screens and the blinking lights. Today we talk about atmospheric pollution and the composition. So what we are breathing in the air and how sunlight can help us in measure that. Uh, here on the screen uh, you see an iconic image. Uh, you have probably seen that in uh, a press release or YouTube video. And uh, this is a map of the nitrogen dioxide. Uh, this is measured by satellite. And nitrogen dioxide is, uh, is a harmful pollutant. And uh, you see that the highest value that you see it in red are uh, over uh, the most populated and polluted region in the world. Let's say Asia, uh, Europe, North America. Uh, it is interesting also to see that you have uh, blobs here that are yellowish over uh, the Congo and here there are not a lot of uh, habitants but uh, there is uh, a natural source production. Uh, what is uh, nitric dioxide? Uh, nitric dioxide is composed by the two most abundant molecules in the air and uh, these are oxygen and nitrogen forming oxides but uh, these are quite difficult to, to form because naturally you have nitrogen and oxygen that are in two uh, molecules and they are quite stable so you need a lot of heat so you needed to burn something to go with a temperature above 400 degrees Celsius to form nitrogen dioxide. So these are typically products of combustion, either from anthropogenic and uh, uh, carbon, uh, carbon fires or even from, uh, from forest fires. Let's go a bit, uh, a bit beyond and uh, let's see how difficult it is to obtain an image like this. Here you see uh, you see the animation on how uh, a polar satellite measure above the Earth. And you see that the satellite makes strips over, uh, over our planet. And then the map that you have seen is a composite of all those strips. Now, for the rest of this tutorial, we will see how to build a map like the one that you have seen before. The first thing the first ingredient that we need is to obtain the data. We can, uh, uh, we can make use of, uh, of UMETSAT uh, datasets uh, that are distributed via the, uh, via the SAF and you can, uh, you can go on the, on the SAF website. Here is the Atmospheric Composition SAF, so the AC SAF, just note the, the address. And then everyone can uh, uh, get access to the data and download the datasets that you would like to need. Okay, in that case, we have decided that we want to go with the tropospheric columns, so nitrogen dioxide. And uh, uh, as a first glance, you can uh, still start with uh, the, uh, the image uh, of the datasets that you would like to have. And here you see that we can have, uh, we have the stripes and we have the concentration of NO2, again, with a high value over China. This is already very nice. This comes from the GOM2 instrument on board the METOPB satellite. And this is the image for, for today, for the 16th of August. But we would like to put the hands on that. So the first thing is to go inside the site and decide to, uh, to download the sets we would like to have. So once you have registered, you can browse and you can find the date you would like to have go on the day and, for instance, decide to download one of these orbits. These files are in HDF format, it's a hierarchical data format, so you cannot open them as, as it is, but you need, uh, you need the proper tools. What we propose to you now here is to make use of Python. Python is a language, is a free source language that is more and more used for scientific and technical applications. And here in UMESAT we are developing a lot of tools in Python to handle and to make nice plots out of the data. So you can, for instance, go on, on the GitHub and download a series of uh, uh, Python codes that I will show you here. And uh, uh, this one is the first one that we will see. Uh, is visualized uh, through the Jupyter uh, to the Jupyter notebook, and you can see it as a sort of as a sort of text. But this text contains instructions. 
Uh, so we need to, to compile step by step all the instruction we have here. So the first thing uh, we have uh, to import in Python uh, the libraries. So external codes that uh, make our simple code able to handle with data. So as a first thing we need to import a code that help us to handle HDF datasets. Then we need to import uh, uh, additional libraries to handle the data and to make the plots. And then finally, okay, we open the dataset. So here is a level two dataset from Gomi. Mm -hmm. So the, the file name is very long, but you can find here uh, the date, the hour. So here we are dealing with a file with a, with a, with a measurements that happened on 2019, February 4th. And this file, as we will see, will contain a lot of information that we have to select. Then let's compile. And now we just read the data set and now the data set is in our memory and now what is interesting for us is to check what is inside and with this instruction we just browse what is in the data set first one are on the cloud properties because the first thing that satellite measure is the cloud are the cloud height the cloud thickness and of course the cloud coverage this is important because once you have a cloud it is unlikely or very difficult to make other measurements so cloud are a sort of screening of the data then you have uh, uh, so the so-called deteriorated results and the T's are related to the uh, complex uh, inversion system algorithm to obtain the data sets. And what we want to go directly is to make use of the total columns. And here you see that you have a lot of names, a lot of chemical compounds. And what we want to take is the NO2. So these are the total columns, is the total amount of the gas that is measured from the top of the atmosphere to the ground. And so let's select our uh, tropospheric column of NO2 and let's see, of course, what other attributes we do need. So we need, for instance, the coordinates and we need the units. Here we have molecule per square centimeter. So the numbers that you will see are the number, real number of molecules of the gas that are contained in a small column of uh, one centimeter square centimeter area for spanning on all the height of the atmosphere. Then we have to create an array and that is, is a quite technical stuff but the nice thing now is that we can make a first plot here hmm? so we just take the latitude okay the longitude and we make a, we make a plot on where the measurements are made and then you see here that you can visualize a nice strip these are actual measurement point for the satellite so each one of these points is one independent measurement and these are the stripes that we have seen before in the video for uh, the functioning of the polar system. And then we can make a nice additional trick, for instance, add colors to those points. So color the points with the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide. And then what, what will happen? We will make a similar plot like this. We are working now interactively with data. We are showing what is uh, uh, what is happening there. And then here you can see that you have uh, uh, some lighter colors here above Europe. But of course, this is uh, a single orbit is uh, is already quite interesting. is already uh, is already important for many applications. But we are still distant from a map. To obtain a map, we need to put together a lot of data, a lot of what we call the level 2 data are the geolocated, so the, the numbers that we have for each point of the orbit, and for instance, make use of a higher level of data, and this is what we call the level 3. Level 3 are data that are gridded over uh, a regular uh, geographical grid that is composed by longitude and latitude. This data can be also uh, can be also taken from the website that we have seen before. Uh, instead of going on uh, here, you go on level three, and then on level three you have the NO2 data. And the NO2 data you have several years, and you can download one map.
Of course, since uh, uh, these data sets uh, are uh, passing quite often, but uh, I mean, not every time, you need to accumulate over time. And these maps are monthly means or monthly accumulated. So they're not valid for the instant like level two, but they are valid for the whole month. And let's go back to our data sets and let's see what uh, what we have so in this script now we uh, again we uh, we have to do as before uh, we need uh, to import uh, a series of, uh, of codes uh, to uh, to read the, the data set and here again we see that the, the data set is a GOM comes from the GOM instrument on board the method B. Now we are watching uh, uh, data sets that are on February 2017. So let's read them. Okay. And now let's see what is in the data. It will be a bit different because uh, there will be uh, latitude and longitude. So within the data set, the data file, you have latitude and longitude to identify where uh, the data are located. And then uh, there is an array. And the array is the NO2 total, so this means that is the concentration of the total column. And the total column is defined for each latitude and each longitude grid point. And now we can make a very, very simple operation. So we can uh, decide to take a slice and see what happens above Europe. So we decide to slice between 30 and 70 in latitude and then minus 10 and 40 in longitude. Just to give you an idea, minus 10 is something like a bit west of Portugal, while 40 is well into Russia, while 30 south is the uh, North Africa and 70 is north of the polar circle. So we just make a basic plot out of it and let's see what comes out. Okay, the basic plot is just to visualize the data as they are. Hmm. So this uh, seems uh, uh, a sort of shades, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, it seems uh, a messy map, but if you look carefully, again here, like the iconic map that you've seen at the beginning, you have uh, uh, spots where you have higher concentrations. And let's see to what these spots correspond. We need to add some uh, geographical reference, and uh, this is the same map as we have seen before, and now we have uh, the Europe coastlines. So you see that the spots of higher NO2, they happen close to the Netherlands. Here you are in the Povale in Italy, that is one of the most polluted areas. And here you are on the, uh, on the coast in the, in the Middle East and in Northern Egypt. This is very nice. This is the first image that, uh, that uh, you, have, uh, you have for Europe. But now we would like to turn on and try to explore the world. So we can define to slice and to decide to go for different longitudes and latitudes. So now we would like to move and to have a more global view up to Asia. And let's see what happens if we make the plot in that way. So once we have selected the new area that here corresponds to uh, a larger part of our planet, so going from Europe to Asia and spanning from south of the equator from minus 30 to the North Pole, we obtain a more global map similar to the one that we have seen at the beginning. And again here you see the large spots over China, over India, and even here in, uh, in, in Iran, and uh, it is visible area of the town of Tehran. So we can, uh, we can produce, save the, uh, the map in an external file, and then uh, we have uh, a PNG, a classical image uh, format, with our map that you can make use of. So we have uh, started from, uh, uh, from web or web available maps. We have uh, browsed from where the data sets, in that case from GOM2, can be downloaded and can be used. We have made use of uh, Python tools based on Jupyter Notebooks to browse those data and to visualize both the level 2, so the orbit-based geometry, and the level 3, the maps. And then we have built our own map over Europe and in that case over the global. And uh, this type of information is important, of course, for your blog, for uh, 
uh, your visualization, uh, uh, but it is also very important for controlling the atmospheric composition and is used by scientists and by service to better understand and to monitor what is in our atmosphere. So we, we do hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, do not hesitate to come back to us for any question, inquiry and follow what's coming up in the next weeks on our channel. Thank you very much.